All right, I got the old fuel sender uh, that was giving me a bad signal out. Here it is, what it looks like, small. The only thing I was able to find, because this part number that's here in the TM, uh, there's the TM number, there's the page number for the work packet. Um, this thing's not very good with explaining what to do to like inspect it and stuff. Like for example, right here, it tells you to place the multimeter on these wires, which is basically, uh, you know, the wire coming off the top and then there's the one screw at the ground. And it just says, move flow up and down, resistance should vary. Okay, well it varied for me. I didn't know what the variance was supposed to be. Ended up finding out through searching after trying to install a similar float switch to that I put not float switch fuel sender fuel level sender that I had in my uh, upgraded in my MEP 802 alpha those won't work uh, apparently the new standard is like 240 ohm to 30 ohm this is a 0 to 30 ohm that's an old GM type so I found this universal type one on eBay for 28 bucks. And as you can tell, it's enormous. Um, gives you a, a real simple instructions to adjust it, which I'm gonna end up having to modify it. Uh, I wrote zero to 30 ohm on there. What the name of it was on eBay is a fuel level sender unit, GM type zero to 30 ohms, six to 24. I, um, my address is on that, that's why I had to splice it. Um, so what my plan is, obviously this is gonna need to be cut down, not a big deal, cause I can compare it to this. Um, if I possibly could reuse this, I would, but I won't be able to. Um, the idea is, is you un, the, there's Phillips head screws for these two on the other side, you loosen it and they'll slide up and down in a channel. Well, when you slide it up, it's not enough. What I'm gonna do is take this off, with the two screws completely get it out of the way. Right here, where the channel ends, I'm gonna cut off. And the top of the adjustable piece, I'm gonna bottom out. Sorry, I keep going back and forth with the camera here. Um, bottom out, drill two holes, and that will put it at about the depth that it needs to be. Um, then the other problem is gonna be, is when I took this out, Fuel senders always, there's always one offset hole. This is the one that sort of faces, um, like if the video, if I was recording a video from behind the generator where the fuel fill is, it faces up that way uh, perfectly so that the float, you can see it in the fuel fill. You're gonna have to make sure that this has the same orientation as that. So once I cut it, I'm gonna undo all these bolts and it will come apart and I'm going to match this up with that one and then retighten it so it's facing the right way and then lastly is going to be taking that you know cannibalizing this and lining it up and making it about the same it might not be perfect as far as showing the fuel level but what I did do was take the leads see I got them sitting right there put it to run and just move it up and down and the gauge did go right where it was supposed to where with the other one because the ohms were off it was showing full and then like way over full that's the only range that it would have um the symptom i was having after putting this new gauge in was the fuel sender was giving me some changing readings like the tm says when you check it but it had like certain dead spots so it would jump all over the place and it gave me like an accurate reading from say like full down to like half ish and then it would drop and all of a sudden it would spike all the way back up so it was worn out i mean it was old um, and you can't find the exact part number for this it'd be a lot easier um, it's a really big pain in the ass to get back there i'm not looking forward to trying to push it back in but uh it is what it is one last note too, uh, this one that I bought didn't come with new screws for the fuel sender, so make sure you save the ones from here. Um, the other thing too is I have this three pack. Uh, there's the 
NSN and the part number. This is like the military three pack of the sender gaskets that they have. Um, much better than the rubber one that came with this. I always found the rubber ones suck. They end up leaking. Uh, these ones are a lot more forgiving. And then what I'm going to do too is I have a little bit of just like RTV gasket maker. I'm going to kind of soak it around it too because that's such a pain in the ass to install into the generator. I don't want it to leak and to have to do it again. All right, I got the sender in. You can see it down there. I just put that little piece of tape around it as a label and left it on there. But you can see I put probably way more than was needed of the gasket sealant. This is a little bit better angle of it. And uh, made sure that it was lined up properly. And boy, was it was a pain in the ass. Uh, the way I got the sender in is I came in from here. And you got to just get it, get it in place the best you can and then make sure it's lined up, you know, get all your screws hand tightened and then go around um, in a crisscross pattern. Uh, I ended up using one of the little stubby screwdrivers to be able to get in there and then got a bigger one on the ones that I could to snug them down. Uh, I've had this thing loaded in and out of my truck twice driven 800 miles with it in the back of my truck, dragged it around my yard and stuff like that with the tank completely filled and it didn't leak. So I'm happy with how that came out. Um, I didn't record a video of after I made the modifications and put it in because I ended up getting like really involved with it and I, I just kind of forgot. Um, I really wish that I did show you see if you can see the float in here what it looked like but I didn't and you can see it you can see the float right there so it's it's pretty close to factory but um did get done it's just one of those things that's huge pain in the ass like working on a lot of this generator because everything's so freaking tight and no access panels and stuff all right, so replacing this fuel gauge. I couldn't really find a solid answer on this. You know, the the technical manual gives you a part number, and if you go look that up, you'll get a huge wide range. You'll have ones that say quarter tank, half tank, three quarters. This one just has like the little bubbles and whatnot that, that show you status. They're all basically the same. Um, you could look at the technical information if it's available for that specific part number, like you can see the manufacturer part number is on there from Ferracorp Corporation. Um, but generally they're all zero to 30 ohms because they've been using these same gauges for like 60 years um, in military tactical vehicles. And that's actually what this one was from. It was, it was to be used in like a Humvee and stuff like that. So when I got mine, you can see that there's some cutaway rubber and that these are more like pins instead of studs like the original one, like on the clamps here. Um, I already tossed out my old one. I didn't record any of the work putting this in because it's, it's pretty simple. You just match it up, but I didn't think to talk about this. Um, so I just used a razor blade and I cut the rubber away. And then really carefully, this nut that tightens it down to the body for this... Uh, butt connector I loosened that and then I just put my um, connectors underneath of it and then tighten the uh, nut down on top of it because um, this one was meant for like the dashboard of a Humvee what that rubber was for is similar to, like your connections underneath like if you redid a, 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 a military trailer or whatever it's a really tight fitting butt connector so the idea was is you undo these two screws you put the new gauge in and pop pop you put those in behind the dashboard to the same wires that they were hooked up to previously and you're good to go. That's it. Um, I did the same thing on this side. Same size hole. And um, yeah, it works. So if, if, if you find some other one that doesn't look exactly the same, uh, this is a good solution. While well, I'm on the topic of fuel gauge and I'd already talked about the... Uh, Sender, fuel sender too. 
about how I had the issue with this being a zero to 30 ohm gauge and the improved float switch that I wanted to use not working because it was like a 30 to 240 ohm. What you could have done for a lot cheaper is they have a gauge that you can buy from China that will fit in a hole like this. That's like 12 bucks on eBay and it's a 12 or a 24 volt gauge. That gauge is like a 30 to a, a 240 or 320. I don't remember off the top of my head as I'm recording this. I'm sorry, but the more modern fuel senders. Then you could have used one of the more modern fuel senders that are easier to find and possibly might fit better. Um, that's an option for you too. I didn't know that that, that could have been an option at the time because I didn't know that fuel senders had different ohms and there was different gauges but live and learn that's why i've been doing these projects